One of the most important theorems about differentiable functions is the chain rule. And what we'll do is we'll state the chain rule, and instead of giving the proof, we'll give the intuitive idea of why the formula should work. And for the actual proof, I, I suggest you look at the notes. So let A be a subset of R P. Let B be a subset of R N. And consider the following functions. And in fact, let C be an element of A. And suppose that these are open as well. And here we have functions A, B. So we have a function f from A to B, a function g from B to Rm, and functions f and g with f differentiable at C and G differentiable at F of C. So C is an element here, F of C is, a, is an element here, and what we want to check is whether this composition function is differentiable, and it is, then G composed with F which is this function here, is also differentiable at C. And in fact, not only is it differentiable, but we have an explicit formula for the derivative in terms of the derivatives of f and the derivative of g. And this explicit formula is given by so let's just think, we have the derivative of f, and now a is a subset of rp, so the domain of the differential is rp, and its codomain is in rn here. So we have this differential of f at c, that's because f is differentiable, and we also have the derivative of g. And the codomain of G is Rm here. So we have D, and we're looking at the image of the function f at C. So G is differentiable at fc, and we write this as its operator. And what we want to know is what the differential is of the composition of these two functions. So what we want is dc at g composed with, applied to g composed with f. This, again, the claim is that it's differentiable, so we want to be consistent with our notation, so we call it dc applied to the function g composed with f. And the claim is that, here we have three operators, just so you are totally clear, um, and this diagram here commutes. And let's just be totally clear what that means. It means that this function, this linear transformation, equals this one composed with this one. In other words, d, c, g, f equals the matrix multiplication of these two linear transformations. That's the chain rule in higher dimensions. And you can check that exactly this is the same exact result for functions of a single variable when we interpret these linear operators as just the slopes of the function at those points. And when we multiply two such slopes, that's exactly multiplying two linear transformations of, from R to R. And 
again, instead of giving the proof of this theorem, let's describe the intuition for why this formula should even work. We know that for this to be differential, for the function f composed, g composed with f to be differentiable, we would need to find some operator. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but um, it would have to satisfy the condition that the limit as h approaches 0 of g of f at c plus h minus g of f at c minus this operator, which we don't know yet. Let's just keep the same notation, g of f. Uh, applied to the vector h should be 0. So let's look at this expression and let's approximate it using our earlier uh, intuitive ideas. So if we approximate the first term using the fact that f is differentiable we can vaguely write this as f of c plus, again, this is not rigorous at all, it's just intuition, dcf applied to the vector h minus gfc plus higher order terms. Let's make sure that at this step, the input for g is well defined. So f of c is an element of Rn, dcf, so h is, an h is an element of Rp, and when you push it forward along this linear operator, we get an element in Rn. So we have two elements of Rn, and this expression makes sense, and as long as h is small enough, for instance, if f was defined on an open set, then this could be made small enough so that this is indeed in the domain of G. And we can approximate now, we can use the fact that G is differentiable, And then we can approximate by taking the derivative of g at fc. And then we apply it to this vector. This is our new vector. This is our new h. Minus g f c plus higher order terms. And what do you notice? You notice that this term cancels with this term. And when you look at this expression, if I rewrite this, this is nothing but dfc, g. This, again, think of this as a matrix, a linear transformation. This is also a linear transformation. So I have two linear transformations applied to the vector h. And this linear transformation is exactly this composition that is in the claim of the theorem. So again, rather than giving the proof, which is far different from this uh, vague calculation, I'll leave the proof to the notes. So I'll, I'll draw this as a half proof. It's not even a partial proof, but um, at least it gives you an idea of where this formula is coming from. Besides this theorem, it, this theorem also leads to a huge number of examples. And Examples in the sense that we're not talking about specific functions like f of x comma y equals x squared times y times sine of x. Uh, what, what I mean is examples of classes of functions. And similarly, there's an algebraic limit, an algebraic differentiability theorem that's similar to the algebraic differentiability theorem of analysis one, where we discussed functions of the form when you take two functions and when you add them, that's differentiable. When you multiply two functions, that's differentiable as well, and that's where we learned about the product rule. When we take the quotient of two functions when they're well-defined, uh, that's the quotient rule. And similarly, when we multiply by a constant, the resulting function is also differentiable, and we've calculated its derivative. Similar theorems also hold in several variables. But there are some very new and important results that we need, um, such as the following. So we mentioned one of the functions that's differentiable is this, uh, that's continuous is the sum function. So if I take the sum function from R2 to R, where S of 
x comma y is equal to x plus y. We saw that this function is different is continuous. It's also differentiable. Another important example of a class of functions that's differentiable is um, a function f from a domain n to rm is differentiable at some point at some point c if and only if all of the component functions pi i f which we denoted by fi from r n to r are differentiable And we also have, not only do we have the sum function, but we also have the product function, which is also incredibly important. It's the product function from R2 to R, and where the product of x comma y equals x times y. This is also differentiable. With these theorems and related ones, we can use them to actually take derivatives of familiar functions um, and although it's not easy to take differential finding the differential of a function uh, using these theorems later we'll learn about the partial derivative and using partial derivatives we'll be able to take we'll be able to find the differential of functions much more easily than we would using just these theorems alone